So here today we're gonna discuss uh, our sample spec. If you know, and who, and any of you, did you trade at all? Trading at all? Yes. And uh, here about the terminology about uh, specs. And you buy, actually buy some, buy some spec. No. <laughs> That's good for you. That's good for you. So spec is a very cheap thing, uh, but actually you can make uh, a. Um, a bound like that, a better, better than bound like return for specs to head to inflation, especially at the high inflation uh, environment. So let's get started. Uh, so in this um, presentation, I'm going to first talk about what is spec and how is spec structure. Um, you guys maybe know the terminology, but you may not know how is spec structure. Structure in detail and why spectre was actually, actually not used is but it should be it was very popular since the early uh, late uh, 2019 and it's very populated in 2020 and they get a, a booming 2021 and then they get a crush thing since later 2021 and basically in the bottom line is what we can do with spec. Um, so there are several strategies you can play with spec actually making decent amount of money. For example, you can short those these spec spec to making maybe ten percent retaining amount, and I will show you guys how that works. But it's uh, those days are very difficult to get locate. It's very difficult. We made some. So what is spec? Spec uh, specs uh, stand for special purpose acquisition company, and. Uh, it's basically it's a shared company. It doesn't have any business. The target for specs is basically a bunch of people raising money through the underwriter, uh, and uh, they are looking for a real company, a private company, and merge with to turn the private company into a public company. That's how spec works. And uh, uh, that's why they, 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 they use the spec as a vehicle to go public. There are several advantages and uh, disadvantages we're going to discuss later in this uh, class. But uh, let's look at the structure capital structure first. So, in ordinary, the stack typically uh, IPO with a bundle. What we call a bundle is called a unit. Um, in this case, uh, spec uh, uh, in nine nine percent nine of the stack is offered at ten dollar. For the bundle, which in a typical structure you get uh, one share and plus a quarter to one word, depending on the uh, the spectra teams and uh, what's uh, their perspective are. And basically, it's very difficult for retail investor to participate uh, the spec IPO. Only the institutional uh, player is doing spec IPO. So. Um, in those days, a lot of spec gonna overfund in the trust to attract um, the institutional buyer to buy the specs. So right now I'm gonna take a second and let's uh, go into some statistic data on this uh, on, on this uh, spec thing. So so here you can see that's a chart from a website called Spec Insider. They get a very good uh, data for the uh, they have good very good database on specs. No matter which state, from pre-IPO to IPO uh, and uh, announced here and this back, they got all type of data you can look at as a reference. So let's see uh, on those columns. Uh, you can see uh, the IPO procedure typical, uh, very standard. Uh, two hundred million is uh, about the average size. They rise, they rise uh, about two hundred million to the underwriters. And you can see the, uh, what's the percentage called in trust. You can see those days are typically about $10. So the one we did yesterday is uh, 1030, which means it's about 3% above the, um, the IPO price. So give an example. Um, yesterday we participated in this IPO. We bought, I don't know what's our final allocation are. It's kind of coming out in maybe several minutes. I don't know. but. Uh, um, uh, we bought it ten dollars at the unit, so we get uh, like a one um, 
share plus the half warrant in a unit, and the thing at the the trust value for the share actually was 1030. Basically, either we after 15 because this one only have 15 months lifetime. After 15 months, we either can choose to redeem our share at 1030, or when it's very close to the fair value of the trust that we just sell on the open market. And we most probably we're gonna sell the warrants when they separate trading it. Uh, so this this is they just overfund the trust to attract the buyer. So that's how you can make money, right? It's about uh, if you consider the return, we, we can calculate it here. You get a ten thirty. When you buy ten, you can get ten thirty, and uh, in within we fifteen months. So basically, it's three percent in 15, uh, fifteen months plus. You get a half worth half. A worth maybe worth twenty cents. You can consider as a out of money two years option. One to one option is not one to one hundred option, and you can get um, on average you can get a four to five percent return within fifteen months. It's very decent. It's better than bond. And if you can add a one term leverage, you can uh, make make basically a high uh, single digit return from seven to eight percent annualized, which is very good for this environmental. So we get some big clients uh, coming to us uh, from this uh, strategy, and it's doing very well. Um, all right, let's move back to the structure for the uh, stack. So in uh, SPAC, um, they get uh, a founder. Uh, where am I? Okay. So um, when you look SPAC management team, they get in, uh, they get an incentive to buy fund idea. Typically, they can get a fraction of the um, the founder share from the SPACs. If if they succeed, found a um, private company and made the acquisition. You gonna get an incentive. So in most of the cases, those specs management team are formed by um, very extremely experienced uh, retired CEO, CIO for some big companies, which they have uh, tons of uh, connection in the industry. It's easy to get a fair value of the private company, plus they know which company they should buy. Uh, so that's how the thing works. So here, I give an example for the um, woman spec. Um, I reviewed their pipe deal um, called CBI. They did a renewable deal for the um, the top roofing, uh, the roofing top solar panel at the uh, industrial level. And you can see their uh, management team. They most of them are from uh, uh, those uh, high level um, experience. Either you can say the investment bank and the industrial. Uh, so that's how the typical spec team looks like, uh, and they typically the whole team maybe get, uh, I'll say um, around mostly in on average they will get three percent of the total, uh, the founder the total share of the spec after acquisition. So that's their um, motivations because they get the free founder share. Uh, if the uh, they get a one year lockup period, but if they can make us succeed. Um, uh, acquisition, they typically can make uh, several million at least uh, um, uh, for that purpose. That's why there's so many uh, spec on the market. Are they set up as C corps? Uh, yes. Typically, most they are they are C corps. Um, so this is another example of uh, um, spec um, spa management team. How it looks like. Uh, basically, they they, they found an EVD. Uh, 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 so as uh, so, uh, uh, the uh, climate really impact solution. So once they get a um, very good successful deal, they're going to launch spec two, spec three, etc. Because uh, they can play the game all day long, and uh, as far as uh, they can find a deal and get done within the lifetime of spec. So the typical spec has two years lifetime on average, but sometimes it could be shortened. Uh, those days, they try to uh, shorten the spec lifetime and get uh, the deal done, rush the deal done as soon as possible because the space is so crowded. Then let's let's can uh, let's take a look on the uh, some of spec uh, numbers. If you scroll all the way down, you can see it's above uh, 
Um, maybe this one has better data. The so Canada has better data. Um, if you look at the, those uh, searching years, it's about 600, over 600 specs are looking for private company to merge. So it's that rate, we believe, gonna, that's going to be a, a disaster later this year because a lot of specs only have two year lifetime and they launched it earlier last year and in late 2019, they have to rush the deal down. So uh, that's why you're going to see a lot of shitty deal um, on the market and we tend to short those deals if you can get a bottle. It's, uh, it's very difficult but not impossible. You maybe get a one song or ten song short on some of the names and you can make a decent amount of uh, return within a couple of days. Why is it that the SPACs typically only have a two-year lifetime? That's uh, written by the, uh, oh, that's a two, two reason. First of all is uh, uh, the SEC requirement. You cannot have infinite time to look for a target. The second, it's uh, more like uh, you get this incentive thing because uh, if you don't have two-year time for the management team, they can take a long time, they can relax. Or whatever, but and for the spec IPO investor, you want to get the deal done as soon as possible. Either you can quit, redeem your IPO share, it's a trust value, or you can sell on the open market, or you can, if you like the company, you can hold the share. So that's why we want the lifetime of spec. It's short, but it's not too short, and for difficult for them to find a deal. So two years is most like a fair value for a for for a fair. Lifetime for us back. Okay. So that's a reason. So, how to do that? And uh, that's fair, I would say. And if you look at 600 number uh, specs, I would say at least a half of them cannot find a deal. Because uh, basically, we can see only one, two, maybe only uh, on average, you can see one deal announced the average trading days, not even calendar days. Uh, so, which means in a year, you only can get a slightly above 200 uh, I, um, deal get closed. So another wrestle that cannot find deal. So, which is good for us, but very bad for the um, risk capital investor. They're gonna lose, lost all the money. So I will explain um, the risk capital structure later on. All right. As you know, the numbers. Um, we can take a look on the announcement here. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's about like six, uh, one, uh, like one or six uh, specs found the target and uh, waiting for the SEC to approve the deal and they can close the deal. Uh, the typically time frame is about uh, uh, five months those days. SEC is not very efficient. So there's opportunities, I will explain later on how, what, what we did for those type of structure, as a strategy. So, so here I can explain detail, we in a spec um, lifetime. Sorry. Um, yes, all right, that's, that's okay. The whole procedure you have to first uh, to file S1 for IPO, and uh, you got to uh, write how, uh, what's the target uh, company or the target field you are looking for a private company to um, merge. And the second, you have to write uh, what's the uh, um, target uh, size you want to rise through the IPO, and uh, you are, uh, well, also you're on the writer. Then we will select the data, everything got green light from SEC, you got, uh, and they said, oh, we are ready to go. And you pay the money for the underwriter for the fees to IPO, then you can launch your IPO. And uh, basically, uh, your underwriter is going to help you to uh, find the buyer to buy your IPO shares. Then you get um, the time to looking for your target private company. Uh, typically, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, in the older days, it could be two years, and uh, this year, typically, they have uh, uh, 18 months uh, structure, because it's, uh, um, I would think those days, if you want to ask back IP, you definitely, you better already find a target and launch it, even though it's not all old, but um, you can say that. 
uh, then you get uh, they gonna negotiate with the target company, get the detailed structure. What's a what's a term? Um, what's a um, uh, like an enterprise value for the target company? Let's say um, maybe uh, ten times EBITDA, like twenty twenty three, twenty twenty five EBITDA. It's depending on how they do the evaluation, and they have some in this procedure. Um, they gotta have some nasty things could going on. Um, then, in the next stage, they they want to have a a pipe investor to join them to um, to secure the transaction. For example, if you are looking for a private company and you didn't raise up any pipe money, private investment in um, public equity. So if you don't do that, wait. If you uh, IPO share get redeemed. Most likely those days you get 90% redemption in, in, uh, in the IPO shares, you get scrub, you cannot close a deal. Because if you are the private company, go through a stack, you cannot raise a bunch of cash and go to public and you have, you have to dilute your shares. Why you do that? There's no, no point you can you want to do that, right? If you are, unless you can go through a SPAC, SPAC procedure and raise enough cash to carry on research and development for the next couple of years, you would do that. Otherwise, you wouldn't do that. Because you have to dilute your shares with uh, IPO shares of the, and to, also to the spec management team, which they have to uh, go to public. So that's why they typically want uh, looking for pipe deals. And we did uh, um, actually three pipe deals. One was very successful with rice uh, acquisition. They did a renewable natural gas a company called uh, Kia Energy, and the stock I believe is trading around eighteen dollar. We bought uh, uh, twenty million pipe on this uh, company, and made. and we also have a very shitty deal, uh, um, Michael Best, which is a battery company. I think it's trading somewhere around seven dollar. So basically, we lost thirty percent of that money. But we didn't do much. We did uh, uh, eight million on that one. And uh, we also did it for the uh, one of the other companies, uh, more like a, um, a disruptive uh, uh, renewable energy, which is trading at five dollar right now. So you can't handle the risk uh, for those kind of deals. Um, so because those are like a hyper growth company, especially in the high inflation environment, the, the the company value gonna be like uh, crushed during the high inflation period. That's why. <laughs> And plus, for the pipe investor, you have to you have a three months lockup period. You cannot sell your shares um, within three months after the deal closed. So they got more new structure going on on those days. They more like have a preferred um, um, preferred equity type of structure, and they they gave uh, typically they also give the pipe investor a eight dollar floor to exit. So basically, if you invest ten dollar. You can exit it in it, 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 it all. That's what uh, they claim in this days to protect those pipe investors. Otherwise, they don't want to do that. Then, when you have the pipe investor join the uh, investment and you just submit all the paperwork to SEC, waiting the SEC to get approval in this time period, typically take, uh, could take a year for some international years, but in the domestic, typically, every time it could be four to five. Um, Months. So you gotta expect uh, 120 days to 150 days on average close a year. So then you are, you have to have the shareholders vote your um, merge. But 99 percent of the time they gonna uh, approve. That's the reason. If I'm the IPO shareholder, I don't like the deal. I want to exit. I'd rather to approve the deal because that way I can get my uh, IPO share redeemed in cash. Uh, if you like the deal, of course you want <laughs> you want to approve the uh, approve the uh, this deal, right? Then you can hold the, the real company's shares. Uh, besides, the uh, the management team always wants to get a, uh, get a, the the deal done. Then they can make an incentive after a year lockup period. Then the, the last procedure is uh, this back and the close the deal when the when they get the vote down. The exit uh, protection is gone, so you you'll never be able to redeem your share at ten dollar or the trust or even ten thirty the trust value of the shares. You just uh, 
um, became a hold any um, real public company she has visited as a protecting it. So that's the, uh, the whole lifetime of SPAC. So if you look at here, you can see typically a flow chart how, how things go, goes and uh, if the, the Russia government, yeah, they're moving forward to meet the uh, further investor and the private investor, if now they get written to the target searching procedure. We so we saw several deal break uh, since the last uh, December because there's uh, several reasons. Uh, one reason is uh, the valuation was high since earlier 2021. All the company you can um, you can see the all the crazy things going on. Company are uh, valued at uh, 30 times EBITDA. It's 25 EBITDA. 2025 EBITDA is project number, and they, they never be able to reach that number. So typically, we have to give a 20% discount on where they projected um, for the 2025 EBITDA. And uh, so uh, one crazy company called uh, Solid Water. Uh, I have um, a meeting with that team. They told me um, they, they, just, they are working on a solid battery, which has uh, could have a potential, uh, huge potential. But the problem is, they, are, they told me we cannot have uh, industrial level production until 2028. I said, that's bullshit, it's too far away. You guys shouldn't go, go to public market, you should stay in the startup stage. Uh, then they are evaluated the company at a very high enterprise value. So I was like, no, it's not going to work. So I turned down the, the deal. So I said, no, we cannot invest that money. And uh, things like that. Also, some companies. Uh, a um, uh, autopilot uh, driving system company was asking for um, 80x 2025 EBITDA. Uh, that's way really close to that. You, you basically, I don't trust that you guys can succeed. See, then uh, eventually, the do you they know. actually quote you these multiples or do they give you numerical value? Numerical value. So basically, they get a third party. I, I, I believe it's a, most of done by the underwriter. Basically, the sales side, um, they did the financial model for those companies. But in 99% of the time, they are wrong. The, the projection is way higher than your expectation. And I, when I look at the thing, you guys grow your revenue 10x every year. It's not feasible. I don't think it's going to happen. There's no way. Uh, you you can't reach that point. So, but that's what you can see. It's really happening in the world. In those pipe um, meeting, they are showing up like, yeah, like how like, a, no, I'm not a VC type of investor. We cannot do that. Yeah. Um, so they should. It, it's better. Uh, it, it creates a lot of chaos, but uh, also some opportunities. You can. You, you have to keep your eyes open to find the good deals. So here's the, the screenshot of the front page of the S1 file for a SPAC, which is a social capital. It's a very popular one. This guy has been uh, launched uh, at least uh, six or eight SPACs. And they get some um, uh, the Virgin Galaxy uh, and other two or three like, good company, etc. through their SPACs. You can see uh, they write uh, like a 35, um, what's a unit? 35 million unit, which means like ten dollar per unit. The the IPO size is going to be uh, 350 million. That's the money they they trying to raise for the IPO. And you also can see um, that's the price to public and uh, how much uh, the under uh, underwriter going to take the commissions. That's that's uh, the money. They gotta pay for the uh, underwriter called risk capital. We can see it. Yeah, that's uh, basically uh, the hit table content. And then uh, here, they got a uh, proposed uh, which uh, area, which type of company they are looking for. So basically, they are state here, they are looking for the technology sector company um, for their spec. So you can expect what type of company they're looking for. And um, it's very popular in the last year if you're looking for a renewable or energy transition sector or like a, 
electrical vehicle, um, etc. Those type of intersector they are really like like doing that and get a lot of attraction. If you recall, uh, the craziness is the two thousand twenty one February. Those things go to IPO. The, they did nothing. The price jumped to eleven dollar, twelve dollar. They didn't even have a target. They are like twenty percent above the trust value. Who gonna buy that? I just have a question. <laughs> Who gonna buy that? That's crazy. Um, that's the craziness of the IPO. Then, because um, a lot of people saw that phenomenon, that then you saw like uh, the next month you got fifty IPO, uh, uh, fifty IPO for SPACs. Then everybody trying to rush into the market and uh, be trading higher. Then people realize they didn't have anything yet. Then they got correction. Trading below the trust level, which is a correct way because you always have some premium for the discount premium for the trust level because of the waiting time period. Yeah, that's a story happening. And now those days, the uh, most of the spec are trading like uh, uh, like shit. I would say that. <laughs> so uh, here the uh, one of the old things uh, they they made this uh, uh, graph on uh, twenty twenty. And it shows up like what's a spec uh, uh, size? It's about like uh, five uh, hundred million and the mid range, and what's the target looking for? And uh, they also shows up some announced here at the bottom and close here. In fact, uh, in the specs, uh, this graph there's a two uh, company is trading well. In particular, if you look at the draft king, I think the trading it. Uh, Sixteen dollar, eighteen dollar, and this one has the MP materials. It's the only real earth um, uh, producer in US. It actually is trading at forty five dollar, which means if the team can find a very good company, they actually can make a lot of like incentive fee on the on that deal. But that's very real. It's uh, I think one out of one hundred. Even less those days, because the uh, valuation get crushed. So then, when you find a target company, uh, you think you want to uh, have some pipe investor to back up you guys and to get the deal done. Now, now let's look up uh, what's a pipe, typically pipe size and how it looks like. We can move to some analysis deal here get a hack because they get a better data. Um, Oh, let's give an example. This company, AMCI Leasing Corp. 2, which is their second spec, they, they have a recent announcement earlier this week. You can see announced date uh, March 8th, which is, uh, I remember, it's uh, Tuesday. And uh, it's a carbon company. And they have uh, IPO size, this uh, IPO uh, size. And this is a pipe size, so basically 125 million is a pipe size. However, the minimum cash condition to close the deal is to 50, which means they need 72 percent of their IPO money to close the deal. If during this period they can add more um, pipe investor, um, uh, add the money into the <coughs> pipe size, they may get some trouble to close the deal. Maybe at the end of the day. The deal gonna break. They have to back to a searching, uh, searching mode again, and uh, and you can say the last price of trading is nine seventy nine. Basically, you can buy the, the share at nine seventy nine. Potentially, within five months, you can redeem it ten dollar. That's not a bad deal. As a two percent, you consider six months lifetime of the six months waiting time for the SEC to approve the deal. If the deal get approved, uh, yeah, you get. To get the money, and the other year you can see um, it's very good. It's uh, trading at nine eighty five. The trust value is uh, ten oh five. Means twenty dollar. Oh, sorry, twenty cent discount from that, and you can buy that and redeem it for the twenty cents. Um, twenty cent gain within five five months, which is not bad if you consider um, it's annualized. You are more than four percent, right? It's it's, it's decent. And you have a minimized risk because if the thing goes even lower, you always have a ten dollar exit to get your money back. 
That's very important. That's a very important read message from your broker if you're about to have the broker gonna send you a message twice to remind you you want to redeem your share before X Y date. What's the final decision made and you can say it's a like carbon emission company. In those days the the green tech uh, some those things are very popular. You can see the that the price value is one point eight really high to me. Um, uh, but I don't know how they calculate it. But those days they typically downsize the uh, enterprise value uh, to that. And some popular company you even can see the the price is trading be, uh, uh, above this uh, trust value. So people I hope the company do the target company is a good company. This, you can see it's uh, crypto exchange, that's why it's very popular, it's a crypto exchange. So maybe it would be because the greatness happening in the crypto uh, currency it could have a, a good cash flow um, for the business. And uh, um, for most of those, the thing you can see is about 20 to 30 cent below, the, actually most like 20 to 25 cent below the trust value, which means you can make about 2% return in five, six months, which I would say fair. Um, I wouldn't see anything wrong with that, but uh, that's kind of bound type of return you expect it actually matter. Okay, let's move back to the, um, how the specs uh, structure looks like, the transaction structure. So after they get the public invest done, um, let, let, let's say this one we had, uh, um, we, we have participated in this pipe deal called the uh, uh, Sina Hydrogen Transaction. And as you can see here, um, on the source, so the total they, they did the estimation on um, like the, if the, the, all the IPO uh, sh shareholder got to roll, uh, roll over into the public company, they're going to add like 250 million of, uh, like in cash and uh, uh, also, we also have to uh, raise up 200 million at the pipe investor, so they get some um, a cash adding to their balance sheets for them to like uh, establish uh, a uh, like a, a the next uh, two or three years for the R and D project. So th this company is doing a doing a concentrated solar power company uh, project. To like uh, basically they collect, they use mirrors to reflect uh, solar power to a single point to heat the target up to above uh, 1000 Celsius and to storage the heat in a insulating chamber using that heat to um, to do mainly for like heavy industry purpose. They have a uh, uh, clients uh, real Tinto, uh, BP, BHP, those big like. Uh, a mining company to, to refining those mines, they need like uh, gold green. So that's how they can um, get 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 a sufficient enough energy. That's why we think this might be a game changer. So we put some money for this. <laughs> but now the thing is trading at five dollars. That's kind of frustrating. That's fine. It's only like less than one percent in our total portfolio, so we are fine. It not hurt us. It hurt, it hurt us, but not hurt us that much. So on the pie chart, you can see the structure of the um, pro forma ownership. You can see the original the hydrogen company uh, shareholder got, get 77% of the, um, the total shares. And the pipe share investor, uh, you get like 8.3%. Uh, and here is a very juicy part. That's why they are motivated to like doing a spec and find the idea getting done because they can get like four, four percent, four point three percent of the total shares. Even though if you cut the value into half, they still like was uh, like uh, five million shares. That's a lot because those shares still was five dollars. It's this moment, and after a year they can uh, redeem this money. Uh, so they can sell this money. Um, Sell the shares on public market, so that's uh, their major motivation why they want to do it. If the deal is very good, for example, the MP materials, 
they can make those management team can make uh, uh, up to like uh, more than uh, like a uh, hundred million on the year for like for their two years uh, for the fund time. That's how they play the game. Uh, so for the merge process, it's kind of like you get the deal done, you have the um, uh, the face get the and uh, negotiate down with the public investor, you make an official announcement, you submit all the materials to the uh, to SEC, just waiting them to approve it. When they get approved, you are good to go. So uh, then you can get uh, the investor meeting, etc., to uh, get the uh, shareholder to vote for the thing. So um, in most of the cases, uh, they get approved. The only very few cases, they don't get enough vote uh, on the uh, shareholder voting because a lot of shareholders forget to vote that they have to postpone the, to set up an, another date to postpone the close date. Typically, they have to a month to prepare that, but uh, uh, that's very rare. It's not a very usual. It's going to happen. So, um, so why is back is popular? Uh, since last year, or uh, even uh, late 2019, I have some statistics. So for the sponsor, because the sponsor can, uh, which I mean is the, the guys uh, back the spec, uh, the spec team who paid for the recent capital for the underwriter fee. Basically, they just paid for the underwriter fee. Uh, they can get a big chunk of uh, economy, uh, big chunk of the uh, the share from from there. That's why they do that. The risk reward, the potential is high, but they take the biggest risk. If they cannot get a deal, they can lose all the money. So typically, the, uh, the risk capital is about, uh, what's the size of the IPO? If you do a 200 million IPO, you're gonna pay roughly around uh, um, five million to seven million for the risk capital, depending on the underwriter, some uh, like a shitty underwriter, you might be able, or be able to negotiate down for the fee even lower, but they they don't, they don't have a strong network to get a well distributed clients. Uh, some uh, high end underwriter like Goldman Sachs or, or like Morgan Stanley, they require a high fee for like maybe three percent and three uh, percent and a half for the uh, IPO size. <coughs> All right, for the. IPO investor, especially if you can buy participant IPO, it's very nice. We can get a, a higher uh, single digit return within two years. We like that, especially um, uh, for institutional and we get a lot of clients that are looking for like an income type or uh, product that they like it uh, because they want to minimize the risk and no volatility and have a better than bound return. That's what they, what they ask for. Plus the liquidity is plenty during, during the in, in the public trading. Even though it's not as liquid as you thought, but it's liquid enough, we can exit all the position within a week. Okay. Then um, the third is warranted is always a bonus. Uh, as we can see, um, in some extraordinary cases, um, things can can go extremely well. Let's say a particular Trump related SPAC name. If you, any of you heard of this ticker name, EWEC became a Batman stock eventually. It's a SPAC now trading $73. Um, the underlying the target company is called the Trump, uh, Truth Media, it's uh, uh, sponsored by Trump. And the valuation is crazy on this one. <laughs> the public investor is paying for 40 $5 per share, pipe investment. And this thing is trading at 73, which doesn't make sense for me, but if you can see how the GameStop and the AMC is trading at that, I was surprised it can stay high because it's uh, Trump is a, a topic, um, right? All right, let's move back. So we get a, uh, like a, uh, France has launched a, uh, those uh, I, uh, SPAC ETF, and then he had about 3% of their, his portfolio in DWAC before the announcement. The, 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 
uh, ETF had a big jump on that day. They can announce them. The thing jumped from uh, ten dollar to one thirty in one day. Then uh, he sold the, most of the positions, and the book had a huge gain. So spend most of the year are boring, but you will get some surprise like that one. If you get that, that one is a free gift. You got you just take it. It's just <coughs> amazing if you're only screening stocks that are more than fifty dollars a share, and you see this. What was the name of that last? EWC. Whack, and you see that it's just a regular tradable instrument. You have no idea that it's really this magical unicorn out here called the stack. You just think it's any other stock. Yeah. And you trade it technically to that way. You don't think of any fundamentals. Well, yeah, I would say the MMS stock is a different category. You have to think about it. They could be squeezed without a lot in a day. That GameStop, AMC, this one. It was uh, this uh, stock jump like ten percent regularly in a single day, and it can be like a drop another drop, like jump ten percent in, in one day and drop like fifteen percent in another day. Can I ask another question? Yeah. Uh, I hate it when people ask this question, but because you can't really answer it the way people want you to. Uh, but what percent of these warrants expire worthless on these? So that's a very good question. It happened uh, one or the other way. So if the SPAC deer, um, team cannot find the deer, it just going to expire. With, it just goes goes to expire worth less with the SPAC get uh, uh, redeemed with the money returned to the IPO shareholder uh, within two, after two years. They cannot find it. And if they found a private company. And get uh, the deal done successfully. The warrants extend to five years. We got a five-year lifetime. So theoretically, most of those warrants are still like tradable. It's not expired yet. So basically, you add a three years time value to the warrant. And these trade on the exchange. Yeah, it's tradable on the exchange. And because you add a three years more life uh, lifetime to Time value to the world it became more like valuable than like twenty cents maybe. Even though the stock, I saw some cases. I can give you a, give you guess a terrible example for the company. Even though we have a, we meet the, they they try to ask us to put some money down on the company. You can see it's get smashed. When the deal got closed, it immediately knocks down from uh, ten dollar to. Uh, at some point, my dollar and a half. We heard a um, a portfolio manager um, participate in PIAC, and his uh, investment was roughly at, uh, 50 million, and then he just uh, screwed up housing <laughs> for his family office. Uh, so, this company toasted this ticker, so you can see. But even though the warrants for this ticker still trading at uh, 30 cents. You get a $11.50 strike level when you still trading at uh, 30 cents because the time value is high. So they, people think that perhaps there's a possibility the company made a big uh, project that can jump back. In my point of view, it's not going to happen uh, because I know the company well. Um, so we avoid this company. Otherwise, we're gonna be killed by our investor, black uh, investor. Uh, so that's the reason why SPAC became popular. And uh, now let's talk about the, the comparison of SPAC versus the traditional IPO. On the traditional IPO, you might need to take a longer time to get a thing public. Uh, typically. Here, right, six to nine months, but those days could go to one year. On SPAC, um, when, the, when the SEC is not that busy, you can get the, the deal approved within three to four months. And um, um, basically, uh, you get a third, uh, uh, shorter price, and the uh, valuation for the SPAC uh, goes to the SPAC, and the cost is typically lower than the traditional IPO, that's the major reason 
they, they want goes to the stack. It's about like uh, 50 bips uh, lower or even sometimes can be like 1% uh, lower on the underwater fee. So it's a big deal. If you, your size is huge, it's going to uh, save a lot of money for the thing. But other than that, I didn't see a major advantage on the spec. Basically, you can have a faster uh, time. You can save some money on the on the, um, on the right fee. That's the advantage for the spec. For the traditional IPO, it just takes a longer time to do investigation and a uh, high investment uh, around the road. But uh, in my point of view, the most of the um, good company, they have chance, the, good, the big good, good uh, quality company trying to do traditional IPO because they don't want that with their shares with SPAC. They can go public. That their asset is uh, high quality. They believe the buyers are going to buy that. Um, so let's see some some upside on SPAC uh, for the investors uh, and uh, so the, the, for for the companies you can get some uh, very high quality um, partnership because especially the SPAC management team is formed by very experienced uh, uh, CEO from big companies they know how to run the company they can have the the small pub, uh, private company to have a smooth transaction from the private company to a public company because they have experience know how to run a public company, which is quite different from a private company. That's one um, advantage. The second advantage, is, as I mentioned, is uh, the three to four months to get a year done, and then you get the uh, a certainty to okay um, how the how how. Uh, What's the shareholder base gonna looks like for your company? Because the thing already traded on the public market, and if the shareholder likes the company, and likes the high company, they might just buy the share. All right. For the um, investor, then you know what the company you are looking for. They typically release the uh, the um, financial analysis and the financial projection on the target private company. And you also could have potential uh, upside uh, um, profitability on the target company, even though um, the, trend, the odds are very low. But uh, the good thing you have uh, redemption protection. That's the best thing for SPAC. You always have uh, uh, exit uh, protection for your IPO shares. If you don't like the private company, you always can sell, redeem it for the trust value. And, uh, that's it. Also, for the uh, spec, uh, for 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 the uh, you also can could invest in some late stage startup company has a high potential. Because typically, you won't find those company on the public market, but uh, they go to pub, they go to public through specs, which means some retail investor could also uh, invest into those uh, late stage or mid stage startup company. Even though the risk is high, the reward can be high, so it's a uh, it's a balance you have to handle it, which is not open to retail investing in most of the case unless you are qualified purchaser participate in some private equity funding to like uh, uh, funding for those uh, startup companies. All right, and uh, the downside is basically. Uh, um, for the sponsor quality, sometimes can be shitty. Uh, it's a bad team, and they they have very bad valuation on the company and made a mistake uh, to have higher valuation and screw up the whole thing. Uh, also, um, the when the, when the space gets very clouded, uh, as now you can see there's over six hundred back is looking for com target company, and uh, I wouldn't think that's the uh, um, sufficient enough high quality company around the world to to supply those specs, and uh, they may get a, a trouble to that. And for the retail investor, if you don't know how to value those company properly, or uh, do some research on the target company, you might have uh, a huge loss on that. But in my opinion, if those days you do a portfolio type, you do a basket type. 
it just shows like a, a ten like recently closed uh, spec, and uh, if the the redemption rate is not that high, your odds on um, making money is very high. And uh, it is a little bit old, but uh, it's kind of like uh, we can see the most of specs are trading below this uh, trust value. That's how the spec return looks like. It's kind of getting lower. Then you just start there. If you look the, uh, we can go to the spec income, uh, spec insider to see the statistics. Yeah, get kind of more fresh data. Why it's taking so long? Is that how it's yeah. Oh yeah, that's just too much data. Yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah. Now you can see the year to mature, that's what I'm talking about. The, that's the average year to mature you can receive on spec. On average, you can get like, right now you can get about like a 2.8% year to mature, which means you buy it on an average, you buy the stock um, when they get expired on the deadline, or they get funded year, you can get 2% 2, 2 and 8 on average return. So it's better than bond, right, John? And you, you always can exit. So that's the beauty of that. And uh, we can look at some other numbers. In the 2021, that's the greatest year. You totally launched uh, uh, almost 800 spec in a single year. And you can see spec uh, existing since 2009, and you are not getting very popular until late 2019. And you can see, um, that's, uh, in, when you see here this column liquidity, means the spec has failed to fund a private company and redistribute the money back to the IPO investor. When the class finished? Oh, we're doing fine. Uh, 12.05. Okay. Uh, that, that's good. So, as you can see, you had, so they had to return the money to the, um, IPO investors, and we are expecting the number going to be high since then. So 2019, uh, 2020 is still fine. You can see, um, like uh, about like uh, uh, half of the specs get uh, the year, which means they get the, the year down and the successful close the year, and you get like still have 71 in the searching. The odds for those deals get close is getting lower and lower, and uh, still there's uh, like another there's another 32 announced the deal means uh, they are waiting for the deal get closed. But for 2021, you end up has uh, majority of suspects are still looking for deals. I bet it's gonna be a very big challenge for them to find a deal and get closed. So we are looking for investors there. But uh, uh, there's some uh, opportunity for the investor to buy the share and redeem it. You won't make a lot, but you make some. Like, like, like the, on average, you can make like 2%, 2.8%, which is decent enough. If you can get a, it a one time leverage net fee, you may get uh, close to 5% return. But if you are like a very picky, maybe you can find some 3% or even 3% and a half. Uh, year to future ticker. In fact, in, in our portfolio, also the ticker has uh, three percent and a half year to mature. That's what we have. We just uh, no, it's a no brainer by the trader by the stock the trading uh, equal or higher than three percent and a half. We just buy it and waiting for the redemption. This kind of save a lot of like a uh, um, headache. <laughs> do that. And in fact, uh, what else you can do is we also did a, a um, we call it a boost the income strategy. We sell a cover a car the cost on stacks because we bought, let's say we bought the share at 980, we write a $10 cover call on top of that. 
we made uh, maybe five to ten cents per ounce or every two months. It's not bad. Fifty bits because the fifty bits the months is decent enough. And then if you're lucky, you get caught up with that's the best outcome. <laughs> you make like uh, two percent and a half a million a month. That's what the, the income stream you're looking for. So um, yeah, then you can see uh, twenty twenty one is. Uh, it's it's a crazy year and then 2022 um, the IPO never getting cooling down. And in fact, uh, the January and February we still have uh, a lot of IPOs. And you can see if we go through go to the uh, uh, what is it? Maybe I can go to can organize the data. Yeah, if you look at on the March, you only have three spec. It uh, goes to the public market. So then in the February, you can you have a roughly around 20 number. Uh, I'm not sure that, but roughly around 20 number at January and about 30. Now people realize that, oh shit, the space gate is so cloudy. We may not be able to find any deals sooner or later. Uh, so we better wait until like uh, the space gate uh, clear up a little bit. Uh, then they, they're going to jump to the now the experience the team get more credit like this the in the capital they have launched the, the four stacks they are down three one we know the team very well they did a they did several good organization like Wallbox and one EV deal I can't remember exactly but they are trading above the trust value and some of the other companies on no team so. You could have potentially very low quality with very uh, with some unknown um, like some small like uh, underwriter like EF Hutton, IBEX Security, be ready um, and uh, some of the underwriter with it's not like big enough to well know that like we take it to those big uh, sales side firm like UBS POA we do deals with them but we never did like some of those things because uh, um, we, we're not familiar well and we also don't have a relationship with those <laughs> other writers. Um, in terms of the returns, uh, equal with a little bit higher, the reason is because the trust and value is going up, so the return slightly goes up, up a little bit. And let's see, we can, we can have another view of those uh, spec uh, things. So this uh, table shows you up like uh, what's the, uh, the voting date like. So typically they're gonna set up a vote date when they're gonna do that from SEC. SEC said you guys are ready for get a vote to close the deal. Then they're gonna set up, typically they give uh, one month notice before uh, they got after they got green light, but in some real cases they got very rushed, they have only two weeks to to vote uh, because they want to get the deal done as soon as possible. And uh, and you get the redemption dead and then typically two trading days uh, before the vote day, which means if you want to redeem your shares, you have to ask tell your broker on that day. To get if after that day they, they only can give you like a, the best effort they cannot guarantee to redeem your share. <laughs> we get in trouble. So that's very important to read the message from your broker. Okay, that's it. And we can look at some statistics on how the um, vote redemption. This table very interesting. Very very. Interesting. Um, now, as you can see, here is the current share price, uh, and this uh, IPO size, that's a redemption rate. It's how many, this tell you how, how much IPO shares can redeem by the investor, which means how much uh, flow share remaining under the uh, scene. And you can see the current unit price, the uh, share price is most of them are below the trust value. It's kind of nasty. Uh, let's get the solid a little bit. I don't want to see something from 2010. Okay, get my most. I get again. 
Yeah, now you can see this deal goes, uh, they get a vote uh, just last month, and the share price crashed down to $2.73. Uh, <laughs> really we see a month from $10. But there are some deals like this one, they are trading above like trust value, and there's the uh, odds. So this one, the ISPO, uh, I told my friend to short the name. Luckily, he got some borrow, and if you saw it, that's how the money be made. It's been squeezed up to one hundred dollars, and you just he just shot from seventy seven to forty in one day job to forty six. You basically make making a lot in one day. Even though the the rate is very high, do you know guess what's the short rate? What's the borrow rate they ask? Oh, for this, I don't know, seventy percent. Two hundred percent annualized, but that's annualized. Two hundred percent. Wow. But you gotta pay like one percent in a day, but you made like a thirty percent in a single day, so it doesn't matter. That's how this thing works. Like they see how how things can be. It's like called short squeeze. If you have you know the technology, how short squeeze happen. It's because of the the available trading share the volume is low. And there's a lot of shorts, people are short of this stock. And they need to cover their shorts, but the volume very thin, they have to pay a higher price, higher price. They just compete, the, the, short, the, the short investors have to compete each other to get the, the, the close position, so they push the price higher. If, if this, so this one has an option, gonna be a gamma squeeze adds up, then that's the thing could go to 200. Fast. But this is most already been very crazy. You can see from twelve dollar to ninety two single day. That's short squeeze. And in most of the uh, that's that's why you can see because there are ninety eight uh, percent uh, ninety eight and a half percent of the IPO share gonna redeem. They only got one percent and a half like uh, unredeemed uh, IPO shares. So basically, the float share is very tiny. If those uh, shareholders are not willing to sell, those uh, shots are going to be in big trouble. That's how you say that. And then, yeah. Uh, and you can see the spread is kind of huge. That's why I recommend that whoever wants shots back to a basket, don't shot only one. If one of uh, our shots you may get in trouble. And you can see some of the years, Jesus. Yeah, those common ECP is uh, a a like a firm in Houston, based in Houston. They do energy private investment a lot in Houston. It's all friends. They they try to ask uh, ask to invest on their pipe deal. We said no. Oh, I asked. I evaluated their pipe deal. I said no. We're not. <laughs> Luckily, we don't just the thing only eighty one seventy seven today. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's uh, a disaster. So if you look at that, also seeing the trading below ten dollar. Only those one get a very very high um, redemption rate. They get squeezed and the trading up about transmit. Um, the reason is that most of those companies, uh, like even though this one only have like one point two uh, redemption in this year, be trading at six thirty. You can scroll down, and most of them are trading terribly. Um, I would say 90% of that. So that's a game basically people can play. You can locate from your broker and show the company as a basket. Um, on average, you may maybe be able to make 10% within a couple of days. That's a, that's a but you just need to handle the risk. Um, you have to have a stop loss on this uh, on single day. Oh, uh, that's pretty much about uh, the spec strategy you can play, and you can play long, uh, long the searching here and short some of those, those, those spec. Actually, there's some uh, uh, there's a two spec ETF you can buy. And yeah, basically this uh, the short D spec ETF, the D spec ETF. I, I remember the DSPAC doing poorly this year. 
those those companies they just buy the despect um, <laughs> companies that they treat poorly. Yeah, it's, you can say it's stock trading a um, couple of days ago. It's just get Harvard almost uh, cut into half within six months. And the other ones uh, is doing well. If you SO, what's the name? SO yeah, you can see uh, that's doing fine. Yeah, you can see a lot from us. So it's kind of very interesting. Huh? So that's a, basically that's a lot of opportunities in this game. Uh, just be careful if you want just want to make a, a bound type of return, you just buy the search year with a, a high percent year to make sure if you want to have a high return, you just do shorter specs. They just get a, a, the deal closed, so you, you might get a, a very juicy profit there. But you're better to um, study the, comp the target company, see what's the company valuation, what's the company business model is, what they are doing. So it requires some fundamental research. I, so I have to review a lot of all those companies to make sure we're not showing a good company. So that's a lot of work, but uh, it was done. Have you uh, seen any option strategies on these ETFs that work? They don't have ETF on those two options. Yeah. That's how they work. Yeah, that's how they are. But, uh, they do have some on the <coughs> specs. Some specs are very popular, they get uh, ETFs. So basically, um, you can sh either short naked call or by put, is what I recommended, um, you can go to making some money. Um, but uh, you have to handle the volatility and uh, you have our risk management system. So I think uh, next time I will talk about more like how to train the volatility and option, et cetera, and what is for, for next time. I, I promise as promised. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's, uh, and you guys all survived from the volatile market, making money or lost money? Get me through it. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yeah, so those survival uh, those are hard. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, is any that's uh, all about my mm, presentation. Is anybody has any questions? Anything? Uh, stock market, the uh, specs. We do a lot of those things. Well, Shifan, we can't thank you. Enough.